Hello, in this video I'm going to give you three editing tips for Adobe Premiere Pro to make the screen recordings in your videos less boring, more interesting, more engaging and definitely less confusing for your audience. So let's get started. Okay, so tip number one is to make use of the Rate Stretch tool in Premiere Pro. What is a Rate Stretch tool, you may ask? Well, let me give an example. So for instance, let's imagine that I'm doing a Photoshop tutorial and I'm doing some adjustments to my image. And at some point in the tutorial, I'm using an HSL adjustment. And in the tutorial, I might say, okay, now I need to do some HSL adjustments and I may need to fiddle with the sliders. So in order to fill the blank space while I am fiddling with the sliders, I might say, okay, let's drag this one a little bit to the left, or maybe a little bit to the right, maybe the other one a little bit to the right, and it takes time and it definitely gets boring very, very quickly. So what I would suggest you to do is to actually say something like, okay, now we are going to apply the HSL adjustment to this image and then stop talking, then do the HSL adjustments that you need, take your time in order to finesse the position of the sliders, in this example, of course, and then after you're done and you bring in those two files into Premiere Pro, you end up with files of a different length. The talking clip is definitely shorter than the screen recording, which is longer because it took you more time to do that. And now you can just grab the rate stretch tool because you can access also by hitting the R key. And then you can just click on the end of the screen recording and just drag it to the left in order to match the length of it with the length of the clip where you're explaining stuff. And the rate stretch tool is different with the normal move tool in a way that if you're using the move tool you would actually trim this screen recording which is definitely not what you want to do but the rate stretch tool instead is speeding up this clip in this situation it can also slow down the clip if you drag it to the right but if you drag it to the left it will speed up the clip to just the exact speed in order to match the length of both two clips together and that way you end up with a very dynamic video where you say what you need to say and then on the screen recording part you actually speed up the stuff that you were doing which is very boring but at the same time you are not cutting anything out so if the user wants to see your process of actually tweaking with those sliders in this example he can do that but it's way way faster and that propels the video definitely way faster it's more dynamic and it's less boring right so the tip number two and by far I think this one is the most important one is to not let your user stare at the full frame of the screen that you are recording. So for instance if you are doing like a Lightroom tutorial or something like I was doing like two weeks ago I was explaining something about the new Lightroom presets that I have released for astrophotography and I was talking about some local brushes that I have came up with. And if I'm talking about the local brushes I don't want the user to stare at the entire screen of my Lightroom because the brushes are on the right hand side and they are very small and if someone is watching this on like a mobile device it's virtually impossible for them to actually read what you are talking about and also if the UI of the program that you are making the screen recording about is very rich it's a very rich interface a lot of things are going on the user might easily get confused about in which portion of this screen should he actually be focusing on so the way to solve it is to actually digitally zoom in into the portion of the frame that you're actually talking about that way the user knows what he needs to be focusing on and also if he uses a mobile device the text and everything is larger and it is easier to follow on even on a small screen and if you do those zoom ins it's better to use a transition when you go from the full frame to the zoomed in frame rather than making a hard cut because that way again the viewer knows where it came from so it knows that aha this is the part of the image that I was seeing before is just a zoomed in portion of that frame and that way it is less confusing and more easy to follow but doing a lot of these zoom in transition in a video tutorial like this is definitely time consuming and it can get tedious very very fast you need to set the keyframes if you want the motion blur you need to manually fiddle around with the stuff in the transform effect so i actually have a solution for you because that was annoying for me as well and i have implemented a plugin for premiere pro an extension that is called drag zoom pro and this extension is phenomenal for editing screen recordings i use it all the time for pretty much all of my videos where i have some screen recording in the video and that plugin you can literally just drag and draw a box around the portion of the frame that you want to zoom into and the plugin takes care of everything calculating the proper values setting up keyframes setting up animations motion blur everything it is just so easy it saves me a ton of time definitely check out this plugin it will be the first link down below in the description I can highly recommend it and also I have a separate video about this plugin you can check it out right here and also it will be on the end screen of that video
And tip number three is to use motion graphics in order to further tell the user on which part of the screen should he be focusing on. So let's take the example with the Lightroom presets. Even if I zoom in into the context menu when I select the local adjustment brush, there is a lot of items in this context menu. And if I'm explaining those brushes, what each of these brushes do, what I can do is actually use a motion graphics to draw a rectangle around one of these settings that I'm actually currently talking about. And if I move on to the next one, I can use an animation to move this rectangle down and that way the user has a very very clear indication as to what is actually being discussed in that portion of the video and in order to add those motion graphics you just have to head over to the essential graphics panel hit on the edit tab and right here hit on this tiny icon and then add new motion graphics it could be a text it could be an ellipse it could be a rectangle whatever you want so what i'm usually using is a rectangle and sometimes i may add an arrow pointing at like a corner of the screen or something so the user has a very 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 clear understanding as to what I'm talking about in the video. And if you combine all these three techniques, so you speed up the boring parts of the video, then you zoom into the portions of the video that you are actually talking about, and on top of that use motion graphics in order to further point the user on the specific part of the screen that he should be focusing on, that's a guarantee that the video is going to be interesting, that it's going to be engaging, that the user is not going to zone out and lose the attention. It will definitely help him understand your video. And right now if you want to check out more editing tips for screencasts, definitely click on the video right here and also click on that video if you want to learn about my plugin for Premiere Pro for those zoom in animations. Also you can consider subscribing right here, I post new videos pretty much every single week and also leave a like down below, it will be appreciated and see you next time hopefully, bye bye.